Alright, let's talk about Federalist 51. Federalist 51 is a series of essays that gives us an in-depth look at the thought process behind the creation of the Constitution. Today I want to share some opinions in regard to the thoughts that James Madison shared through these essays. The first subject that I'd like to look at is, is James Madison's opinion of the role of self-interest in the conduct of one's life realistic? I believe it's extremely realistic, um, and especially in the, in the terms of making the government work. Um, his view is that you, all individuals must go beyond their self-interest to be a part of a union, which is um, the United States. And it's the same for the government. The government also needs to go beyond its own self-interest to look out for the people, and not just in keeping the government afloat, which is technically the government's role, but also taking care of the people um, in a way that you would care for a friend. Um, so his view is to make sure that people in power also have compassion for people who are not in power, um, which is really important to the success of a democratic government like the U.S. The second question I'd like to take a look at is, do you believe the controls against the abuse of power by a single government department have been effective? I think that seeing the, the branch system that James Madison so clearly explained and laid out and then seeing how that is still a huge part of our government today just goes to show how effective that was. Um, the most glaring example of why I don't believe um, the abuse of power is the controls against the abuse of power has been effective is because the executive branch currently has more control over the military than I believe it once did. Um, there is, you know, there's been some unpopular um, calls against calls to war, um, such as going to Iraq, um, and even in Vietnam. There's been some situations where the president has been able to call um, military situations without much of a checks and balances system coming into play. However, I think for the most part that this system works very well in controlling the powers of all the um, of all the branches. The the legislator especially has been um, it, within the Constitution. The 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 system is very effective um, as far as making sure that the legislature is fair because it is at risk of having too much power by creating laws that could technically alter the other branch's powers, but so so far that hasn't occurred. I also want to look at the question of, does the federal government equally serve majority and minority interests today? And it, uh, it kind of depends on a definition of majority and minority, but I want to look at more of a definition not of, say, race or um, uh, rights or something, but rather of the popular vote, the majority vote versus the minority vote. And I think that the U.S. as a system, as our, our government system caters towards the majority, that's how it always works, that's how things get done. Um, but we also have significant protections of the minority that most countries do not have. Um, having the unpopular opinion in some countries can um, lead to serious consequences and sometimes death, uh, just over those kind of disagreements. Um, here in the U.S., you're protected by things like the freedom of speech. Um, however, when looking at the equality of the majority vote versus the minority vote, um, it's kind of no contest because obviously the majority vote is what the U.S. needs to cater towards um, in order to be successful. So the minority vote isn't treated equally, um, however it is treated respectfully um, by the government, which is miles ahead of any other system out there. Now the last question I want to pose is rather, uh, a rather large topic, but uh, it, it's, a, it's the idea is that, is there a role for states anymore? And I, I do believe there is, um, for a variety of reasons. The the biggest example I want to give is that there's U.S. is a the United States is a large country, very large country, and there's other countries with that kind of size that are far less successful at governing the amount of people in them. 
since we're broken up into so many states, there's a lot of smaller, smaller governments um, that the federal government can pass its um, duties onto to kind of cater towards those people and their geographical location even sometimes. Say that California can spend more money towards um, flood protection or something to do with being near the ocean, whereas the state of Nebraska can spend more money towards um, tornadoes and um, other disasters like that. And so it kind of it caters towards geographical location and it caters towards the population as a whole. Um, and the prevention of said population kind of falling into chaos. Um, in a situation like, say, Russia, where it's a very large country, if that government were to fall apart, there wouldn't be much control over the entire country anymore. Whereas in the U.S., if the federal government was no longer successful, if, um, if no one respected it, um, there'd still be all these state governments that people would look towards um, instead of just total chaos. So in a disaster situation, would, while it might seem like a very extreme situation, um, it, it prevents the country from completely falling apart. It allows for these other governments to take over. Um, if there were not a state system, I think that the federal government would be spread too thin. There'd be more complaints about the government being located on the East Coast. Um, and there'd be less general representation for all the people and where they live. Um, so therefore, I think states still play a huge role um, in the success of the United States. And I mean, almost all uh, territories now have are broken up into smaller territories. So I think that just goes to show um, how well the state system has worked over the years. Thanks for taking the time to listen to some of my opinions on the Federalist 51. Until next time, this has been Alex Dolgan.